Okay, here we go. So what is up, my brothers and sisters and my fellow football fanatics? It is the first episode of the 2008 season, believe it or not. And the Red Blacks are first in the East with a record of 5-3. and three. I've been enjoying Ken and DJ's pregame show. They've been doing just killing it over there. And I've got my main man, Tyler, back in the booth with me. And Nakafa has gone provincial. Stay put because we got a great show talking local football. We're going to be talking to CAFA. We're going to be talking to Quebec Midget Football League. And uh, we've got an interview with the head coach of the Orleans Rassman, Ron Raymond. We've got a second interview with Michael Alexander, which is the offensive coordinator for the Nepean Eagles. And uh, we've got much, much, much more after that. So let us begin. I'm Jesse Card, and this is is the Nakafa Football Podcast. You went, you went the prize though, and I like it. Up with the big dog, Joe. Hey, welcome to the show, Tyler. Thanks for uh, being here, man. Glad to be back, man. Football's back. 2018, it's amazing. Football is back. So uh, what are you most excited about this season? Just getting back in the swing of things, you know. Um, now, I've, as people know, I haven't been around the last couple of years, but... You know, raising kids and being uh, being a family man has been amazing. And the, the kids are getting a little older now, so we've got a little more time to get around the football. So I'm just excited to get back into it. You know, yeah, it's me too. Uh, I love the new midget division. We'll talk about all that. Lots of exciting stuff happening in the CAFA. Absolutely, man. Um, let's let's get right into it. So you were you were at the Tyke um, Jamboree. We're going back to the Jamboree, right? We did. We came up with well, we when you and I were Tyke age, eight nine. <laughs> Eight or I nine. Think mosquito, to be honest, it, it, the first one was mosquito. I de- I didn't do a jamboree in Tyke. The first one was my first year mosquito, so that would have been um, when we were eleven. So that no, was like well, 90. you you played Tyke a year before I did. Oh, so okay. Your second Tyke year, we had a jamboree. Oh, I remember it. I remember it specifically. It was at Terry Fox, okay. and uh, it was insane when you go there and you see how many football players there were first off. And then secondly, all these new teams and colors that you've never seen before um, really opens up your mind when you're a young kid. And oh, I used to get the craziest uh, butterflies in my stomach and before every game that didn't really surpass till I was much older. But I remember going there and just being like almost about to puke because there were so many teams and, you know, you saw the Raiders like NFL branded teams. It was it was a lot of fun. And the thing about the Jamboree was really cool is a lot of times it's the first time anyone has ever played football. So I remember a lot of my friends who came out to play football. This is the first time they put on the equipment and they didn't actually play longer than the Jamboree. This is the first and only time they played football. Like my buddy Christian, you know, Christian, he yeah. played football. And that was the first time he played football and he killed it. He did amazing. And he came out for half a year and he was doing really great. And that's why I think the Jamboree is great because It's that first introductory moment that people get to put on the pads, face somebody who is different like you talked about. You get those butterflies in your stomach. And even though it doesn't mean anything, it's more about that proving it to yourself that you can compete with other people. That's really the amazing thing about the Jamboree. So so you were there. I I actually had my bachelor party last weekend. Now, it could have been worse timing because I love going to that event. But... Um, but you were there, you captured some amazing slow-mo. I've gotten so many compliments about, about how close you feel to the action. Cause you were able to be right in there and you know, did you get any grief from the referees this year? No, honestly, the referees, first of all, I've never really got much grief from referees for the, the eight years that we've been doing this or seven years. The referees have been 95% of the time, extremely accommodating and understanding and know that we're trying to help the sport and we're trying to help the kids and we're not trying to show up anyone. This year was even more so. It was like the referees hadn't seen me in a while. It was like they were excited to see me. And with the six on six, the fact that it's not so busy in the field, there's right. a lot more open space. And it just felt like you weren't in the way. And I talked to the referees beforehand. I said, listen, you know, we're doing the promo video. We're going to get right in there, try to help these kids promote it. And they were totally on board. So shout out to the rest for letting me get right in there and understanding um, that, you know, it's this is for the kids. It's and a- like, and, and it's actually funny on that one touchdown pass when the music starts, the big long pass by the Canada yeah. Knights guy. Yeah, yeah. 
I was like, I didn't think, of course, they're going to throw a long bomb over the middle. And I was standing right beside the safety, and I was filming, and I was running backwards as fast as I possibly can, doing backpedal. And I was like, please, God, don't fall over. That would be so embarrassing. <laughs> you fall doing the backpedal. And so. It's a mighty fine backpedal, Ty. Uh, a good one for a QB, nonetheless. Pedal. Um, so so you got in there. Um, I could always run really well back. So the six on six, what was your first impression? Because the six on six was actually a, a bit of an experiment last year. Um, two gentlemen that, that uh, led the committee there um, to, to figure out if that was viable, if that's something that we should do is Paul Stewart from the Val Warriors and Andy McCardle of the Wolverines. They went to Saskatchewan um, to – to kind of talk to a president over there, they, they perform, uh, they do six on six in Saskatchewan and, and um, it's very successful apparently. So they went and they learned a lot of lessons from the Saskatchewan minor football league um, implemented the field size, the way they handle practices, all these sorts of things and, uh, ex- and experimented it, uh, experimented with it. And the first thing they thought was how will people respond to this, this type of play? Will will it be negatively received or positively received? And, Last season, um, it was split. There was a 10 on 10 division and a six on six and all the parents and all the coaches absolutely loved the six on six. There was no negative, um, um, feedback. So this year it was decided to just blanket, make it six on six across the board. That way teams don't have to struggle for, uh, full rosters, right? So there are many teams in the city that maybe can't field 30 kids, 35 kids, um, but they might be able to field 18 and that will, uh, that will uh, allow them to have a tight team and compete in the city. And that's what they did. And now we've got, um, 18 tight teams starting the season this weekend. It's amazing. And I think that the way that I looked at it is I couldn't find any negative for it. And then other than simple things like, oh, well, it's not real football. And, well, I remember when Tyke was good. Like, I remember playing Tyke. I love Tyke. I love the moment of playing football and offensive linemen and doing all that stuff. I'm always going to cherish those years of Tyke. I I don't think that's an unfair statement. But I couldn't think of a real negative of actually having um, the six on six. I think it's probably going to be safer. There's going to be more space. There's going to be the ability for kids to get more touches with the football. I hope there's going to be less special teams plays, which is my biggest beef with tight football, where very often it'd be, you know, snap, snap, punt, snap, snap, punt, touchdown, convert, kickoff, you know, play, play, punt. And so we just did 12 plays and we've had seven special teams plays. And I think that we want to develop skill. We want these kids to have the ball in their hand. Um, when we watch this video here, there's going to be a shot of the Raiders quarterback who throws a beautiful pass for a tight player to, to throw. And it, I, at that moment, something went off in my head to be like, I don't ever remember being in tight football and having the ability to maybe work a skill like throwing the football where I had the time to stand in the, he had the time to stand in the pocket, plant his feet, make a nice throw to a receiver who there was a defender there. You can, you can see it in the highlight. It's really clear. You can see him look, yeah. Make a read and throw to the outside shoulder. You mentioned it when we watched it. And to me, that was one of those things that you would never 0% of the time have been able to do that in previous type football. So to me, that's a huge win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you're going to be able to develop some skills. That pass is coming up. It was remarkable that for him to kind of pause, move his feet, and then find the receiver, get it to him. And it was completed. Uh, that's a pretty amazing thing to see at that age. And, it was great. Uh, it was only, really great. You know, the only the only fear that I think some people have is if there's a big kid and they throw him in running back, um, that that he's just going to be unstoppable with all that open space. But we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Right. You know, I think that there's something to be said. It's like I my argument to that would be that same kid would probably be unstoppable on regular football as well. I don't think he's going to be more or she's going to be more unstoppable because it's six on six. What I do think is with the smaller field and an emphasis on being like, okay, they have this one player. You can really focus on these kids being able to break down and tackling, learning how to tackle properly and not. And I just think that it's amazing. I think it's a great thing. And I'm really excited to see how it goes on this year. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, you think about, 
these kids being able to get out at an early age schools just starting in the next few weeks and they've already you know their their seasons they've got a bit of a uh, a head start with this mosquito madness and tight tight jamboree and now they can sink into their season they can get back to school i remember you know, just the, the last thing about Tyke and Mosquito is, is uh, I remember just the confidence it gave me knowing that I was part of this team with this rough and tumble like sport and uh, and just knowing that like, you know, going out of recess like I, you know, last weekend I just ran for four touchdowns. I got bruises on my arm. It felt amazing. I remember I changed schools in grade five. I was struggling with French. I went to an English school and at the English school, I, there were some guys I played football with. And one of them, look at that, one cut. Of the- look at that cut. That was a beauty. Look at that. Like, plant to his left foot. Then right here, boom. He comes back. That's like Kirby's team, you know. Kirby. And just speaking about sort of get back to this, just seeing the the, fe- the fundamentals that Coach Kirby in Cornwall is teaching his kids, I was blown away by the 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 control and the commitment that that coach and those those parents and those kids have on the Cornwall team specifically. Here's the throw. Check this out. Watch yeah, this. Yeah, looks, watch this. looks at the defender, and like look at this technique. Perfect spiral. Puts it away from the defender. Gets a receiver, outside, outside shoulder, gets a pat on the hat. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And look at this pass, though. This is another beauty pass here. Great catch on the move. You know, when we go to replay, I say it's, it, the ball bounces out at the end, but it's a good, ca- good, uh, good catch. This kid was amazing for the He's the fast. He's fast. He's so fast. For the sport and for the city. And that's – I wouldn't say you were bitter. I, I say you were just frustrated that you didn't see people – as passionate about making this thing better as you were. And, and uh, I hope that maybe the work that that's been done in the last couple of years with Gowan and with, with Chile and with myself and, you know, creating this environment that we're about to embark on. And we have started, we're, we're into week two here. Yeah, um, man. We're going to see how fun it is for the coaches and the players. And we're going to take stock of that and see, see how well, we, you know, we've done with this. And yes. uh, so tell me how fun was it on, uh, on, on, uh, was it Saturday? Well, it would have been fun if we would have got the W, but uh, <laughs> you know what? Um, so, again, we have a lot of kids that – we've only had uh, eight practices for our first game, and so we didn't know a lot of, uh, of the players, right? Um, this was truly our first scrimmage, and we got to know a lot of our kids and a lot of our players right now, and, um, you know, we're making adjustments as we go. But I'm going to give credit to that Salon team, man. They had some really good football player. That quarterback – was um yeah he was pretty pretty elusive eh? oh, Great he, mobile he's got this yeah. crazy little uh stutter kind of drag yeah. foot yeah. um cut. Duker, eh? yeah yeah so this quarterback he gave us a lot of fits and uh, they had a little bull there as a fullback a little 44 and um and the receivers like they just caught a lot of balls like deep balls on us so um yeah. no we yeah. got you know um, what I, I that was the first thing that stuck out it there was just some odd kind of um passes that got caught that you just wouldn't think should have been caught you know so i'm sure uh, you got your work cut out just to clean some things up on the defensive secondary um yeah. you know some jump ball <laughs> um, jump ball exercises at practice this week i'm sure just little things like leverage right contain um you know closing the gap on our uh on our, our coverages um you know recognizing uh, formations and and this is what this is what's all about at midget man this we we got some really kids who've never played football before, and we're teaching the game. And uh, there's only like I, I tell our players, we're, we're we're walking up the CN Tower, and we're on the fourth step right now. Right. So we got a lot of climbing to do, but um, you know what? These kids, these players are going to get better. They're having a lot of fun. They show up to practice, and uh, no, this weekend, Celeron, they it was like a heavyweight fight. You know, round for round, we score, they score, we score, they score. It was. Yeah. Um, and the fans, you know what? At the end of the game, yeah, we were disappointed. But you know what? We were, as a coaching staff, we were happy that our, our players fought to the end. And um, it, you know, they weren't handing out any trophies on that on that day. So that was yeah. the good news we told our guys, right? So anyone that wants to see that game, we put up the highlights. Uh, actually, the highlights will go out this afternoon, um, just to kind of see and fo- be able to follow the season. I think as a as a fan, a parent, or a coach, I mean, being able to see all the games and to to kind of um, um, see the caliber and what type of um, what type of qualities each team has um, I'm, I'm gonna say like I was very impressed with uh, a lot of things that you guys did you I think you you, you di- um, distributed the ball well uh, for first first week you had a pretty 
involved uh, playbook, I would say, offensively, which isn't a surprise because you're such a X's and O's kind of guy. But, um, um, you know, I, I think that running back, tell us about number 25 a little bit. Yeah, so, our, well, just so that people know, our offense coordinator this year is Christian Alley. Um, so, you know, credit on him for doing the uh, for the, the offense this week. Um, I run a Grichi uh, Rivera. So Grichi is a, a player – who um, who played OPFL this season? He was, um, you know, he, he had a good season. Unfortunately for him, he played behind a great running back in Fabrice, so he didn't uh, probably get the uh, the touches he want. But uh, he's taking this opportunity to to show people that you know what he's a, he's a good running back, and you know we yeah. told him, hey, Grichi man, you know what you you we got uh, three good running backs here. You're gonna be part of the the three horsemen, and uh, hopefully you can uh, you know take your opportunity here and run with it, and you know. Have some fun with this. And yeah. we got a great offense line. You look at our old line. Uh, you know, you got guys like Ben Lancaster, 6'3". I, got- I was going to say, ben, ben, that signing of Ben, you know, when he, when he decided to come play, he, I coached him at the uh, JV Panthers. And, I mean, talk about a leader. Talk about a, a hell of an athlete. This guy's probably, you know, the le- one of the leaders on your team, I'm, I'm positive. Yeah, and the thing people don't know about Ben, he's a great long snapper. Like, he's one of the best long snappers in Ottawa. And uh, yeah, yeah so we're he, watching your running back there right now. Yeah, so you see, he's breaking off tackles, and then he's he's got a bit of a gear on him. Oh, he's pretty quick. Yeah, and uh, so no, um, hey, when you got an offensive line like that, you got to take advantage of it, right? And uh, no, but I'm looking forward to seeing how Garicci's going to play uh, uh, for us this season. And um, you know, I'm excited about this league. I I played in this league in 1985 with uh, Darren Joseph and Courtney Trelevin and uh, it was a great league. This is how league, uh, how long this league has been going. And the fact that they're doing it by tiering system is, is fabulous. Like this yeah, here, I think that was a, a genius move. And I, and that I, we got to pay um, um, respect to Gow and Harding for that. The president of the Gatineau uh, Vikings and now their midget team too. Um, he's kind of held off on having a Bantam and a midget team for a long time. You know, they've struggled because of the high schools out there. He decided to go for it. They've got a good team. Uh, the, their highlights will be up today too. So you can see they played Shat and Gay, which is a, a very good team as well. Um, and, um, but I mean, the tiering system is important because you just, you want to be able to be in the same league and all be relevant with the same uh, amount of teams in the same pool. But at the same time, you want to structure things um, wisely so that you don't have these mismatches. And, and truthfully, until things kind of um, just kind of uh, acclimatize, there are going to be some teams that struggle for numbers in certain areas and they shouldn't be playing the teams that like North shore that just consistently can put out 50 kids and, and, and win ball games like they do. Yeah. And and from what I've been told is um, the the top two teams in the Wilbur Scott division will bump up next year if, uh, and then the bottom two come back down. Right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, I think, I think uh, that's like maybe not set in stone, but I think that's certainly a conversation that should be had uh, year to year. Right. Yeah. Oh no! Hey, and the the fact is, what I love about this league is that you play ten games. You right. play ten games plus playoffs. You travel to Montreal. When I was sixteen years old, playing for the Redskins, knowing we were going to Montreal to play Sun Youth, uh, we even went to Saint George de Beauce. Uh As a sixteen year old, knowing you're going in a in a coach bus and you're driving to Montreal and you're stopping on at McDonald's on the way, yeah, and you're with your your guys. It's one of the best feelings that a sixteen year old can have. Uh, football experience on a weekend, right? You're, you're going on the road, you're with your guys, you're having fun, you're playing football. Yeah. And that's the, the point you, you, we keep forgetting. You're going to go have fun, play some football. And you're going to, the thing I always say about football is that football will give you a lot of opportunities, not just about, you know, football, but to go visit other places. Like I've been lucky enough to go visit a lot of places in football, like Texas and, mm-hmm. and uh, down the uh, Syracuse. You know, Syracuse and all these places, you know, because football has allowed me the opportunity to, you know, travel and see a bit of, uh, you know, North America. So football has been really good to me so far. And, uh, and I hope uh, a lot of players play football and see that the, the friendships that you make through football, the traveling that you get, it's uh, it's a, it's a great thing, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, man, good luck this Saturday. We're going to be broadcasting that game live from millennium. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, also be sure we're hoping the rain holds off tomorrow but um oh, yeah yeah we're gonna plug that too um tomorrow night we're gonna be uh, broadcasting 
uh, Bantam game and a midget game from Minto Sportsplex. And we've got Minto Sportsplex is back finally after that awesome. debacle. So uh, if it's raining, be sure to tune into that. You can see the uh, um, Canada Knights, or sorry, the uh, the West Ottawa Knights midget team go uh, go against the um, uh, Myers Riders. That uh, so you get to see those teams on film for the first time, see how they're doing, and uh, it's going to be a great night. And then we got your game Saturday, so um, you know, good luck, and and maybe tell us a little bit about your uh, lumberjack club. Yeah. So what we've done is. Um, we have these coins we've made out. When I was in the military, um, I used to have this this coin here called the the lumberjack. Uh, I was in the lumberjack club in our squadron, and I said, you know what would be a great idea, a souvenir, is that if we built um, a coin like this for the raftman. I don't know if you can see it right there in the yeah. And then in the back, what we do is we put um, season ticket holder, and nice. we'll put the number. And it's a you know, century club. It's a hundred dollars. It's a lifetime membership to the Rossman uh, home games. Um, and, uh, and it's a good souvenir to have, right? Like a lot of coin collectors out there and, um, people who come to a Rossman game, buy season tickets. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I don't think they, uh, they've decided on the final price. It'll be like $2 entry fee or something like that. If not, uh, George said, it'll give people, uh, hot dogs and drinks at the canteen. So we're trying to, you know, raise some money and the money raised through the lumberjack club is going to help pay for uh, players fees and equipment. So it's nothing that, uh, you know, it's not going to a coach's fund or anything like that, right? So everything we do is right can't, yeah. count, count me in. I want to see this organization do well for years to come. And uh, uh, good luck this weekend, Coach. Awesome. Hey, thanks for having me, Jesse. And uh, great to see HSN be part of this because, uh, you know, with this new uh, new social world, uh, we need uh, to get our word out there, right? You so, bet. Good stuff, man. Test, test. Okay, we'll see you Saturday, Ron. All right, Jesse. Thank you anything like this all right so that was a good interview with ron our internet's kind of come up and up and down so i apologize for that but uh we do have one more interview tonight with the oc of the uh, nepean eagles michael alexander i just want to do a quick plug to say the way you can help if you're watching this stream right now is simply share the link on your own personal facebook tag anyone that you think is relevant in football in ottawa um and keep commenting. I mean, we got a great conversation going online. So without any further ado, here is our interview with the uh, offensive coordinator for the Nepean Eagles midget team coming off that tough loss against the North Shore Mustangs. Maybe just tell us about uh, the team this year compared to last year. Everyone's aware of the successful season you guys had last year, but you know how different is it this year? Well, we're a much younger team. Uh, we've got a really good coaching staff. Um, Carlos Blizzard is our head coach. Uh, Dwayne Knight is our uh, defensive coordinator. Uh, we have more or less a brand new coaching staff. Uh, a lot of players. We've got really good numbers. And uh, slowly but surely, we're starting to get some of our bigs to come back because they're pretty important for us. We're a little banged up now, but, you know, for the most part, we're really happy with the amount of players we have and the talent that we have. So, um, you know, we've, we've seen the highlights. We watched the game uh, against North Shore. Like, what a way to start the season, first off, to have to, uh, to play them. Um, you know, what was the feeling going into that game? And, uh, and you know, what, how do you feel that you guys showed for week one? I mean, week one's always tough. We know that offenses come slower than defenses. Um, but maybe just tell us about your uh, reflection of the game on uh, Saturday. Well, you know, Jesse, um I'd say we lost the game 21-6. However, at the half, it was 6-3. And then in the third quarter, we tied it at 6-all. And we were in it. As poorly as we played on offense, we had a chance to win that game. Uh, and our defense, they, they hung on really well. And we had, a, we had one bust in the defensive backfield that led to a long, long touchdown. So we were right there. And they had all their horses, and they, they played well. i got to give them credit. But we can play a lot better. And I know for a fact that next time we play them, it's going to be a completely different story. I can guarantee you that. Well, that's Curtis, and he's one of our veterans. He's probably one of our best, if not our best, defensive back that we have. And if you're going to pick on one of our DBs, that's the guy I suggest you don't pick on because he's that good. 
Just for reference, we're talking about the cornerback for the Eagles, number 22. He um, he was tested like four times in a row, and he came up uh, every time. I think it was a two-point conversion that he got beat on, but like I was very impressed with this cornerback's play. So um, we were really proud of Curtis and, and his efforts in that game, and he was quick to point out to me that the catch that did occur in the end zone was a two-point convert. It wasn't a touchdown. So <laughs> he was quite, quite adamant about that. So, but he's a, he's a tremendous athlete. We've been coaching Curtis for five, six years now. Well, what we saw on Sunday, we will never see again. All right. Our offensive line was just, they, they just forgot everything we taught them. They, that was the worst performance I've seen by an old line in a long time. And they know it and they're taking it on the chin. They're very, very upset, very prideful guys, and, and they've assured me that, uh, you know, the next game will be very, very different. Tice, Tice is 15 years old, and he's learning. You know, he's learning the craft. He wants to be a quarterback. He's got all the pieces there. So I asked uh, Mike because uh, um, <clears throat> we had some technical issues there, so we're just playing this interview, but I asked him about the quarterback. Um, they looked a little green, you know, a little nervous, which is typical in week one, I would say. Um, offenses usually come come um, into their own a little bit later than defenses. I was very impressed with the, the Eagles' defense. We mentioned the cornerback, we, uh, uh, but we're talking about the quarterback right now, and it's interesting what Mike says here. But, you know, when you're 15 years old, you know, you're going to make mistakes. So we're coaching him up. And he admittedly, told us right away that was the worst he's ever played his mechanics were off it was just it was not a good performance so in that game nothing worked we couldn't run the ball couldn't pass the ball we couldn't block we couldn't execute anything and we almost we could have won that game all we needed was a couple of plays so um i'm, I'm expecting big changes out of the quarterback position and the o-line position and we've made some changes internally and i think that's going to help so uh, we're looking forward to myers um, we've got the bye week coming up. We've got plenty of time to fix all our problems and we'll be there. We'll be there. We're, we're, we're aiming to score a lot of points, put it that way. Well, you know, I think the calf has done a smart thing. Steve Dean's a smart guy. He's been doing this a long time. Um, combining with the Quebec league to make the big, the big 10, uh, it's very, very exciting. Players are excited. Coaches are excited. And I think it was long overdue. Um, and I think it's really kind of forced a lot of the Catholic teams in Ottawa to uh, put more effort into their programs because, you know, Quebec is perennially, they're very strong when it comes to football. Uh, so we're expecting them to be strong teams no matter who we play against. But, I, you know, I really think that NACAF has done a great job putting this all together. And, um, you know, with Football Canada coming down with their uh, – they're, they're, they're warning that they're going to force players to choose a team to play for and only play for one team. It really, it really forces the players to make good decisions on the groups that they want to go to. I know from the Eagles, um, our organization is top notch and, and also the, the coaches and the volunteers and everything that goes into it. Uh, so we're going to continue that because we know down the road, players are going to have to make a choice. High school, OPFL, and the CAFA. And it's very sad that that's the case, but you know, it is what it is. We can't change that. But um, it, it, it's a little for me personally. I, I don't like it because I think you're really, you're really forcing the chill the, the players to not play football. Basically, you play for one team. That's it. And I think that's unfair. You know, meanwhile, these same kids go out and play hockey, lacrosse, rugby, and you know, concussions are an issue there too. But football gets blamed. So it is what it is, but hopefully uh, um, uh, NACAFA will continue to uh, evolve and, and get bigger and better. Maybe just tell us about uh, the team this year compared to last year. Everyone's aware of the successful season you guys had last year, but you know how different is it this year? Well, we're a much younger team. Uh, we've got a really good coaching staff. Um, Carlos Blizzard is our head coach. Uh, Dwayne Knight is our uh, defensive coordinator. Uh, we have more or less a brand new coaching staff, uh, a lot of players. We've got really good numbers and uh, slowly but surely we're starting to get some of our bigs to come back because they're pretty important for us. We're a little banged up now, but, you know, for the most part, we're really happy with the amount of players we have and the talent that we have. So, um, you know, 
So that was our interview with Michael Alexander, the offensive coordinator for um, the Nepean Eagles midget team. Sounds like he's excited. I want to thank him for coming. I want to thank everyone that was joining us on the chat, getting their uh, local Ottawa football updates and getting part of the conversation. want to give a shout out to Chiller Lindor. Man, haven't seen you in a few years, but it's awesome to have you on here. I want to thank Ron Raymond for coming on this this week's show. Um, show's going to get better. This is number one. We're just playing around with a little bit of technology uh, issues, but um, thanks for coming in. If there's any suggestions on what we what else we can do, let us know. And um, tomorrow night, just to uh, recap, we are playing a doubleheader live broadcast. First Bantam at 6 o'clock from Minto Field. It's going to be on the stream on Facebook again and on YouTube um, make sure that you tune into that, and then it's going to be followed by a midget Big Ten conference matchup between the Canada Knights and the Myers Riders. Um, pretty sure all of Quebec is going to be watching that. So uh, until then, thanks for watching, man, and uh, peace.